Hey guys, what's up? It's Brandon from USL League One Review and Walk in 90. And every other week on Walk in 90, I'm going to be taking a look at a few of my favorite tactical trends, player performances, goals scored, anything League One related. We're going to talk about it when it comes to tactics and things that are happening on the field. Uh, I can't wait to get started on this journey with y'all. This week, we're going to start off with one of my favorite performances from week one of the League One season, and that was the 4-4-2 defensive structure that Charlotte used to frustrate Richmond uh, in their 0-0 draw last Saturday. I want to bring this up today because Richmond is about to play another team who uses a similar structure, a 4-4-2, that is really stout in the Greenville Tribe. And so it's important for us to take a look at what Charlotte did well against Richmond, what we might see again against Richmond, and how maybe how Richmond can break down this block a little better this week uh, and, and create more chances. Um, so let's take a look. Let's dive into the 4-4-2, how Charlotte used it, and what maybe Richmond can do better this week against the Greenville Triumph. So first off, we're going to start start off by taking a look at this tactics board here. I want to show you a little bit about the 442, why it's such a popular formation, why it's so simple, and kind of the purpose of using it. So if you see here, we've got two blocks of four players, four defenders, four midfielders, two central, two wide, and then we have the two strikers up top. It's a really simple formation. You've probably seen it a thousand times. You've probably heard about it a thousand times. The purpose of the 4-4-2 is pretty simple. Uh, the goal here is to make, if I, if I was going to put it in one word, it is to be compact. Compactness is the key for the 4-4-2, both horizontally and vertically. We want to in, in a 4-4-2, the basic goal is to protect uh, spaces between the lines to prevent players from progressing through central areas closer to goal. So we want, it, we want the ball, if we're in a 4-4-2, to stay in these non-threatening areas of the field where we can control play a little better and prevent teams from getting inside. So basically, the 4-4-2 here we see for Charlotte was pretty simple. We saw two strikers up top who were kind of leading the press. Uh, the defenders in the back who were kind of following Terzaghi around and, and making his day the worst day possible. Um, and midfielders who were doing a really good job marking their men and, and keeping their zones protected. We want to keep our block tight so that it's not easy to um, play through. We don't want um, balls to come through these channels here. Some people might call these the half spaces. We wouldn't want a ball to be able to be passed into this channel to get a player on close to goal. We want to protect these areas of the field. So we tighten the tighten the structure up, make it as, as, as compact as possible so that it's hard to get balls played into that area. And it's the same thing vertically as well. We want to keep this block compact so that it's not easy for players to sit between these lines of defense and receive the ball and have time to turn. And so we want to make sure that those areas of the field are tight as well so that if a player does receive the ball between the lines, they don't have time to make something happen. Okay, and so this is the, basically the idea that Charlotte used against Richmond last Saturday. They set up in this pretty deep block 4-4-2 to frustrate the attack of Richmond with Carlton Belmar coming inside and Terzaghi sitting along the center backs, basically trying to prevent balls from being played into these players. Uh, and so we had players like Neil Vignoles, who was trying to make stuff happen by dropping deep or or kind of sitting between the lines here behind the center midfielders, or even coming out wide to try and receive outside the block, since it was so hard to receive between the lines. Uh, and no matter what they did, no matter what they tried, this, this compact block of Charlotte kept them at bay. I want to take a look at why and some of the things we saw from that game. So again, here we see this 4-4-2 block, and we see two strikers up top who are sitting and protecting space centrally with four midfielders who are doing the same and four defenders who are trying to do the same thing. So the idea here is we keep, again, we keep the block compact, both horizontally and vertically to present, prevent the ball from being played forward. If it does get played vertically into the central areas, we're compact enough vertically that the ball can be dealt with. And that's Charlotte's basic game plan for this game against Richmond. So we see here, I want to give you a little um, tactical board look at what 
we saw Charlotte trying to do here. So let's take a look. We see that when the ball is played between these center backs, basically we have this striker who is pushing up to try and make a curve run to prevent the ball from being passed back to this original center back kind of create make basically making the field smaller to prevent space for the opposition so the striker presses up and makes a curved run which then makes this field a lot smaller we basically you're cut off from this part of the field over here unless you try to make a long switch of play so this is really smart and we see that often uh, unless zaka moran dropped in between these two center backs Miguel Ibarra or Corey Bennett were often man marking Zaka Moran in the middle of the field to prevent him from receiving the ball and getting and turning and moving forward or passing into Neil Vanuels or Justin Suko. So passes over to the fullback and the beauty of the 4-4-2 is that when a ball is passed over to the fullback, the block is shifted over. And it, and by the time by the time the ball circulates around, the whole block has been able to shift over, and a and a winger can come and press out onto that fullback uh, on this side onto the side of the pitch here, so that and they are either going to have to pass back or try to beat their man right here, right along the touchline, which is really really tough to do. And often their body is oriented so that they can't do that anyway, so they have to recirculate the ball back start over what we see here once the once the block has shifted over um we don't want everybody kind of sitting in you know when you think of formations you might think of them kind of in in two straight lines in this 442 with the with the two strikers up top in a straight line as well but kind of the goal when you're defending uh especially on the we'll call it the ball side of the field is we want to stagger our players so that they're on different vertical and horizontal planes to prevent protect every part of the field possible. And so we see here, basically what it does is it creates these walls uh, across the field that prevent Richmond from playing very quickly. Uh, so the defenders of Charlotte use their cover shadows to protect space and prevent a ball from being played centrally. And so we see it happen again, fullback receives. He's got, he's either got to try and make the turn and uh, you know, you might see a center mid here making a run out wide try and get across into the box but often again fullback's body is probably oriented in a way that makes it really hard to turn quickly when you've got a winger pressing out on you like that and so often again you either have to try and find someone inside maybe this eight drops in to receive here if the striker doesn't drop back if you can turn quickly enough and get a ball into this center mid who's pushing out uh, into this wide area to get across into the box or a through ball into someone like Carlton Belmar or Terzaghi um, or even Bentley along the back post there, uh, you have that opportunity. But typically that's very, very hard to do because of how compact and uh, able and how compact the block is and how easy it is to press for a winger once the block has shifted over. So let's take a look at uh, kind of one thing that I noticed in this game was when uh, Zaka Moran would drop into the defense, that instead of the strikers pressing up, they would let him drop. This is supposed to create a 3v2, but when the strikers narrow up and prevent him from passing centrally, all it does really is it allow it, it basically slows play down. He has to pass the ball back over to the center backs who know where to go because basically the strikers have positioned themselves well enough to where they don't have the ability to push forward with the ball. Obviously with center backs like this, you want to have a, a kind of a checklist when you're pushing forward. Is this an area where I can push forward into the field? Do I have a pass on that's more vertical than here? And what's my safety zone? Uh, someone who uh, I, I it inspires me a lot as a guy named Carl Carlin Carpenter. He talks about those checklists that you need as a center back when you're when you're in possession of the ball. Can I carry this ball forward? Do I have a a vertical pass? What's the what's the most dangerous forward pass I can safely make? And do I have a safety net? And because of how well the strikers were positioned for Charlotte in a lot of these situations, it was really really hard for Richmond's center backs to drive forward into space um, and create create issues for the wingers of Charlotte. And so what we saw was a lot of really slow play 
where Rich Charlotte strikers just do a really good job of pressing out and preventing them from driving forward. So I want to take a look at another clip where we see this kind of thing happen again. Good job pressing by Corey Bennett there to force the ball wide. The play is slowed. Again, we try to recirculate the ball, but you see there's the switch. Omar Sis pushes forward. You got three in the back here, but we have to play back to the goalkeeper and the great positioning of Charlotte and work ethic causes a mistake. And again, this 4-4-2, even high up the field, is causing chaos for Richmond that they were not really able to handle very well. Here in the second half, we see this play where Richmond's trying to play out of the back and Charlotte happily lets them attempt to do so. They sit in their mid block. You see that curved run I was talking about from Gabriel Oberton where he tries to make the field smaller and Miguel Ibarra is marking Zach Moran until he, Moran until he drops back. We see winger press out to the fullback. We try to recirculate the ball. It's slow enough. Now, here we see Nathan Ani. He does actually make a good driving run. He makes that vertical pass forward, but Matthew Bentley is so well marked by Clay Dimmick that it just kind of has to restart. And so that was actually a decent play by uh, those two players. It just didn't, nothing, nothing came of it. And here again, I want to note Charlotte's block. So they, they have possession of the ball. They're trying to get forward quickly, but they lose it. So what happens? The beauty of Charlotte's block is Gabriel Overton really works hard to prevent the ball from being played forward quickly. And before you know it, Charlotte's entire block is back in position, forces no venules to go wide, and they lose position of the ball. It was really a master class and keeping structure, preventing the ball from going into the center of the field. So what can Richmond do next time to make this easier on them, break down the block uh, today? Uh, that Greenville is going to be probably putting out and uh, how can they create more chances with their current setup? Uh, there's a couple of things. The things that I would recommend one um, is finding moments like we saw in the clip where the, the center back and uh, the winger connect when the winger drops in. We want to find those moments where the center backs can be brave, push forward and have opportunities to try and force the block to kind of interact and, um, press out to those center backs so they can find someone. Uh, for example, if this center back can push forward, maybe he beats the, the striker here and is able to push forward, which forces this winger, instead of coming to this fullback, forces the winger to engage with this center back. Then he has the opportunity to pass wide, hopefully into space to allow the winger to get the, the fullback to get on the ball and press forward. And now you see this winger is out of position and we have ourselves a three V one or two with this center mid sitting in behind in between the lines of this block. And so uh, we want to see a little, I want to see a little bit more of that this weekend with Richmond, just knowing when to step out and keep possession of the ball, carrying it forward so that they can provoke the wingers to push out and create space. And so that they can create wide overloads to get crosses into the box for players like Terzaghi and Belmar. The thing is creating width, right? We want to make sure that, you know, we're not allowing this block to stay as compact as it is. So one thing you can do is stay as wide as possible, finding, finding ways to stretch this defense. Um, obviously again, Richmond are, are kind of the best at this where they, they find those vertical central passing lanes, or maybe the center, this, this, you know, the wingers pressed out or something, they get the ball into that player here, and then they are able to pass out wide, which forces all of these chain reactions to happen. We see this happen with Richmond all the time where they pass in to out or out to in to out again, uh, getting wingers on the ball in these wide areas or fullbacks on the ball and pushing them into these areas where they can get a good cross in for players like Terzaghi or cutbacks uh, as he's making intelligent movement off the ball. So we want to see a little bit more of that, creating those wide overloads. And basically, this is all a chain reaction, right? We want to see bravery from the center backs to push forward in the right moments uh, so that we're 
forcing the block to forcing that defensive block to react. They're gonna you're gonna want to exploit players like Devin Boyce who are gonna be really proactive. And that's what I love about him as a Greenville fan. Uh, but that's something that Richmond's probably gonna want to exploit. They're gonna want him to be trying to be here, there, and everywhere. Right. As the Omaha fans used to say about him, they they're going to want him to do that so that they can stretch and pull this block apart. And so he's going to have to be disciplined as well to prevent him from overextending and allowing passes into central areas. And so it'll be interesting to see what they what kind of pattern Trishman use, whether it's a, a you know, no venules again, dropping outside the block. We saw one of Charlotte's or Richmond's best moves of the game against Charlotte being that moment where no venules drops outside the block. He's able to receive right here, then do work his little magic before getting a shot off here. That first shot that Austin Pack was able to, to get his hands on and save. Um, that was one of the best moments for honestly for Charlotte of the game. And no venules was involved in a lot of great moments. Um, for this team as he always is uh, but it's going to be key for him as that creative outlet to be able to drop out in the wide areas receive and get back inside or put crosses into the box and so those are the kind of things i want to see from richmond against greenville it's bravery in possession recognizing when to carry the ball forward and create chaos to try and provoke the defensive block into pressing uh, we want to see more of those wide overloads uh, in which the fullback, the winger, and even that central midfielder in the 4-3-3 are able to combine to create chaos here and open up space for Terzaghi, forcing center backs to shift over, opening up space for him and uh, Belmar to get chances off of crosses or cutbacks. Uh, and the other thing we want to see is players like Neil Vignoles and Gal Romero, whoever, whoever they have starting those creative outlets, um, being proactive and finding space, whether it's inside the block or outside the block to create chaos for Greenville and stretch them. So uh, that's basically what I think uh, focus on as they get ready for the game against Greenville. Obviously, this is going to be a classic game as always. These two uh, are incredibly good defensive teams, and it's going to be really tough for both teams to break each other down. But new teams, new seasons. I'm excited to see what happens. If you like this video, let me know. If you've got any comments, questions, you disagree with me, uh, I'd love to hear that too. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I can't wait for our next uh, video together. All right, see you later.